Today's terrifying review, we're going to be having a look at the McFarlane Monsters Series 3, Six Faces of Madness. This is Vlad the Impaler. The true Prince Dracula, known as Vlad Dracula, translated as Son of the Devil, Vlad Tepes, and Vlad the Impaler, an important figure in 15th century Romanian history. Vlad Dracula is known as a patriot, but he is also bloodthirsty, slaughtering between 40,000 and 100,000 of his subjects, usually by impalement during his reign. The third series of the McFarlane Monster action figure line focuses on the past, a historical look back at some of human race's most notorious bloodletters and miscreants, incredibly detailed and fully accessorized. Now, as being that Vlad the Impaler isn't going to stand on his own, I just opted to keep him on his display stand. We'll do the measurements from there. So, starting from the bottom, or at the top of his display base to the top of his head, might even be easier to measure it to the top of his hands. We're going to go to the top of the hands because they're higher. Then the figure, if we look at that, is standing at 6.8 inches. Now, again, I didn't include the display base. If you did include the display base, that would take you right up to about 7.4 inches. So why don't we just do that? After all, you're not gonna be able to stand these figures on their own, they need their bases. So we'll go from there. Translating that to centimeters, the figure stands at 18.8. .8. He comes with two accessories we'll look at in a second. Why don't we go ahead and take the figure off its base. And yeah, as you can see, he's, he sort of stands on his own, but then he leans back and falls over. As for the display base, really neat looking base. We've got a, like a rock facing here with some blood splattered. Can you can't have a McFarlane release without blood. This is rather interesting though, is you've got this pool that's been barred off, making me think as well, this is actually a demon that's reaching its way out from like almost the bowels of hell. That's the only thing I can come up with. Again, creativity and imagination can certainly go a long way, but I do think it's like more a demon that's reaching its hand out from, again, this, this pool of darkness. Again, you've got some nice bars running across there, all of which being covered in blood. And then the figure would stand atop of that with these two pegs. You'll probably also see that there's a hole there. And the only thing I can come up with uh, based on solely the packaging, is that the impaled spear in which Dracula does also wield can also be housed in there. It simply just plugs into the top, or rather I should say it plugs into that hole, and uh, you know, you've got the kind of the spear sticking out from there. Spear looks like it's a little on the shaky side. I've got some bad news to report to you guys. Bad news to the viewers. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, the only other thing I can think of is maybe once again the accessory pack is going to play some role as to what is supposed to be filled in there. I'm again going to say it's the spear that's supposed to go in there as it perfectly fits and sticks its way out. For his accessories, um, like I said, he does come with this. It is broken though. I, when I took it out of the packaging, it, it snapped just a little bit. It's still holding on, but it's holding on by a very thin thread of plastic. So I'm probably going to have to glue that in place. As it goes for the time being, I can't guarantee the longevity of how long that's going to stand. While we are looking at it, I'm just giving your FYI 411 on that right away. The other thing that he comes included with is this really neat looking broadsword. The broadsword has a rather familiar looking decoration around the hilt portion, kind of that of a vampire bat or at the very least, the wings 
the wing portion of the bat. Uh, then you've got the mouth, which almost bears closer a resemblance to a dragon, and it's holding this orb in its mouth. It's a very cool looking sword. It's short though. Based on its hilt, you would think that the sword would be about there, or even longer, but it goes for a little bit more of a shorter route. The blood is, looks like it's been splattered with two different colors, a darker, larger splot of blood, and then a lighter shade of red that's just on the tip. Um, if you are also wondering, no, you can't take the sword and wedge it in there. They don't really have the means to do so. Technically, the sword is to fit on the side of his holster. Well, he's got a little holster right there that the sword can slide its way into. Is that a scabbard? But it slides right into place just like that. I suppose, in theory, you could pry his fingers apart up to the point of doing this review. I haven't done this yet. But the hot water trick, you could pry his fingers apart, I suppose, and fit the fit the axe, fit the axe, fit the sword uh, into his hands like that as well, as if you wanted to wield the sword, which then would explain why you would want the hole here to support the this spear. Um, so you can just stick that in there, and then you could have Vlad then holding the sword. However, though, for the packaging, they've got the sword tucked in place right there, and then they've got the spear, which I know is going to break now, a second go around. I was lucky the first time, probably, yeah, there it goes right there. Not so much on the second, which is perfectly fine because with it being two halves, I can easily just put it in between his hands, just like that. And there you have Vlad holding the spear in his hand. I keep calling it a spear. It looks like it's just really like a long piece of, of wood, almost, that he's forged out, just kind of made into like a, a weapon that he can impale people with. But again, this is the look. This is the look that they've got for the packaging. In theory, I suppose. Again, you could swap that out for the sword. You could have the sword this way, as if he's lunging forward and about to bring down the blade. So a couple of different options you can go with. I'm just going with the defaulted option that they've got on the package itself. Having a look at his head, I really like the head sculpt here. It doesn't have a lot of coloring to the plastic. I mean, there's no additional washes that they've added to it, or at the very least, whatever they have added is very, very minimal. It doesn't have nearly the madness that I would pair up, I think, with Vlad the Impaler, but I still really do like it. What's interesting, though, is about his helmet is on images I've seen of him online, this helmet tends to be more of a metallic gold. Instead, here we get more of a, almost like a gray borderlining a very dark, dark brown. I think it actually works a little bit better this color than it would be the gold. That's just that's just my own opinion. The hair flows very nicely around the front, around the area of his shoulder. Full of detail, though, on his armor plating. One side, he's got the dragon. A little bit of blood. I say a little bit of blood. Excessive amounts of blood have been added to the front plating. And there's the back. Not as much blood. Of course, no blood but very highly detailed. Everything about Vlad is highly detailed, right down to the shoulder uh, the shoulder armor right here that looks very similar to something like a bat. And then one neat little feature is, we just spin this around, he's got a hand on the, on the forearm area of his armor. Be interesting to know the story behind that little hand here. It looks like it's metal, however, it would question as to why that would be there in the first place. As for the rest of his outfit, what isn't armored, it looks like he's wearing just a pair of black pants. I do like the sash that they've got tucked up through his belt and dangling out the other end here. It's got a little bit of a texturing added to it too, so it's you get like a nice mix of different textures between the, the sash this extra fabric that's draped through. Of course, the raised elevation of the armor is really nice. And then you've got the chain link there. So there's really a lot happening here on the sculpt. Even right down to his boots. It looks like there's birds. It almost could be something like an eagle or a phoenix. This thing caught my attention. I'll spin it around right now. He's got two heads dangling out or attached their way 
to the belt. I'm sure they didn't attach themselves, but he attached them once the heads were severed. I feel as if I've seen these before and I would have to go back and look at it again. I did think that this was the same head accessory that came included with the Sleepy Hollow Headless Horseman, which just so happened to also come from the folks over at McFarland Toys. So I would have to go back. I'm not 100% certain. So if it is or if it isn't, not 100% certain. But as you can see, the benefit of at least having them with longer hair is it makes things a lot easier to, to attach them to your belt. The frustrations I could only imagine that poor Vlad would suffer if these guys, these bloats, only had short, if they had shorter hair, well, that would be a little bit more of an entanglement. You'd have a little bit more of a problem entangling their hair, I guess, around his belt area. Love the blood. It's not excessive. It's not like the levels of Attila the Hun, but still, I, blood definitely would have to go hand in hand with that of Vlad the Impaler, so I'm glad. At the very least, there's a minimal amount of blood. There's just enough, just to remind you, yes, this madman slaughtered hundreds of thousands of people. Just as we close up shop here, I just want to tell you as well, I don't know why the arm is a different color than the shoulder. It almost seems as if it skipped paint day. This is the paint it should have really been. I don't know why this is a separate color altogether. It really does stand out. The more I look at it, the more it stands out, I gotta stop looking at it. Now, posability on this guy, it's pretty limited. As to no surprise, I'm, su I'm sure, by the viewers. The head doesn't seem to rotate. I don't think there's a cut in his head where you can actually rotate the, the head back and forth. Uh, the arms do swivel. Not that that's much of a saving grace. There's not really anything you can do with it. Nor can you do anything with the fact that the hands swivel. This hand swivels and then this bicep area swivels. Nothing in the in the torso, nothing in the feet, other than that one boot on the one side. I don't think this one side, no, it does not, just this one side here. So pretty much arm, arm, hand, hand, and one foot. Why do they even bother? Why do they even bother anyways? Because this is a type of figure that once you get him on his display base, let me go right there. There we go. Once you get him on his display base, you're really not going to do too much more with him. Schieffer, of course, putting in the now broken spear. Such a shame that that broke, but a little bit of glue. It's to be expected that figures, when they're this age, get them out of plastic, when you get them out of packaging, for the fact that they're also just, even if you got them out of packaging anyways, that's very thin, brittle plastic add some additional years, some additional decades on top of that, and you're dealing with figures, of course, when you get them out of packaging. Some breakage may happen. It just so happens it broke. At least it broke here and it didn't break on the physical figure because a little bit of glue certainly will come a long way to fix this one impaling character. As we enter into final looks of Vlad the Impaler, this is also the last figure that we were looking at in the Six Faces of Madness. I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed these blood-curdling reviews. That's not the stopping point by any stretch of the imagination. We're still going to have a look at a whole bunch of other cool things over the month of Spottober. But this is the end of Six Faces of Madness. Out of all the figures, and I know I didn't compare all of them at the very end, but just certainly looking at them all after the fact, some of my favorite figures from this line were Rasputin. I really liked that Vlad the Impaler. And uh, I did like Jack the Ripper, although he just didn't have as much happening to him. But he did have a really neat diorama backdrop, which we can't overlook that. I think of my favorites, and I might just be saying this as well because it's Halloween, Dracula, vampires. But I think my favorite, though, is Vlad the Impaler. I like the form that they've got him posed in. Um, he doesn't have a lot of accessories. I mean, if you count the display base, he only technically has three. But he's a neat-looking character, and he's got a neat-looking pose. I think that's that goes a long way for me. If I can't move things on the figure like the arms, the head, if they're pretty pre-posed, at the very least, make them pre-posed, cool-looking statues. Which is sometimes what McFarlane misses its mark on nowadays. He does still make figures somewhat posable, but you really can't do anything with them. These, at the very least, I'm willing to buy into the fact that these are just statues. Pose them exactly the way I've got them posed right now and just leave them alone. And just appreciate them every time I go into the room and look at how cool they were and how cool McFarlane Toys was back in the day when he was making figures like this. 
I had alluded to the fact that we are going to be looking at one other McFarlane toy line over the course of Spottober, and that is true if time is permitting. I've got one more line coming up. Of course, we're going to have a look at some other stuff during the month of Spottober as well, and we're going to have a look at regular reviews as well too, just in case horror isn't your thing. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because either way, whether it's horror related or whether it's superhero figure reviews, the best way you can keep up to date with what's happening on this channel is by hitting the little subscribe button down below, hitting the bell notification, and by swinging over to the home page periodically, checking out the videos that are over there. With all the thumbnails, you'll be able to kind of go through it and see what you've missed, what is new, because 100%, if you can't, can't depend on Google and YouTube all the way, with all the ways that they're changing their format. Clearly along the way, some things get missed, videos get missed, unfortunately. The best place to fix that remedy, or the best way to fix that remedy, is checking out the homepage. And that's the best advice I can give you guys. More videos will be coming your way, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.